Hello, hello folks, and welcome back to my channel. Today, it's another chatty get ready with me. Um, I actually originally had like a really cool makeup look planned for this uh, get ready with me, but I woke up this morning with um, some psoriasis literally directly on my eyelid, which is so great, so great. Um, so this is going to be a primarily skincare and maybe just the tiniest bit of makeup chatty get ready with me while we try and let my eyelid um, heal itself and be less angry. But I still wanted to sit down and film this try to get ready with me anyway because I was really excited about today's topic. So I want to talk about critique and bullying, especially as it applies to the piercing industry because whew, I notice a lot of disconnect on this subject. So what I mean when I say I want to talk about critique versus bullying is that critique is obviously like a very necessary part of being and growing as a body piercer. Um, we're not machines. We're not perfect. We're not going to get it right every single time, which means we do need to hear critique when we do things wrong or just not as good as they could have been so that we can do better for our clients. And you really have to be able to hear that critique. You can't just like shut down the second someone tells you you did a piercing wrong or you used the wrong jewelry or you did something incorrectly. And there's two sides to this. On one side, a lot of piercers can sometimes use critique as a way of bullying. I'm not going to pretend that that doesn't exist. I do see it happen. But a lot of piercers also take really good, really genuine, well-intentioned, helpful critique and interpret it as bullying. And in no way do I want this video to downplay the fact that instances of bullying disguised as critique do happen. I think they happen in every industry. The piercing industry is not unique in that. But it is still very important to be able to hear and handle critique. And that is like actually a skill set. Like that is not something that we are just born knowing how to do. In fact, most humans famously bad at handling critique. And I really think this goes doubly for piercers, and I feel like a lot of the reason why we're so bad at handling critique is because we really do care. Like, we really do care an enormous amount. And A, if we get critique, you know, it's because we did something wrong, and none of us wants to think about the fact that we did something wrong that could have potentially hurt or damaged or otherwise like done something bad to a client like we work on people's bodies um, when we're wrong you know sometimes it's not that big of a deal but sometimes it is a real consequence and that sucks but also this goes for people who are piercers but also people outside of piercing um i think there is a value judgment that a lot of times can come along with critique and what I mean by that is that a lot of times it's really hard to separate our work from ourselves. So when we get critique on our work, you know, let's say someone asked me for feedback about a piercing they did and I say, hey, like you didn't use good quality jewelry. Like there's some really low quality jewelry that was used here. This jewelry maybe wasn't the right size or style for this person's anatomy. Like this could cause some problems. Like I would suggest like, you know, getting the client back and getting appropriate jewelry in. Um, hearing something negative about your work, a lot of times we take it as something negative about ourselves. So, you know, you do appear saying maybe the angle is off, maybe the placement wasn't great, maybe you didn't make the right call on jewelry, whatever the case may be, you get critique and feedback about it and it's negative and it's really easy to internalize it and go, oh my god, I'm a bad piercer, oh my god, I'm a bad person, like I'm bad at my job, and this internalization of critique and this assignment of value on it, right? That getting critique on something we did makes us bad at what we do or a bad person is I think part of what makes people so defensive and have such a hard time hearing critique. Um, and I talked about this before, but I went to art school before I was a body piercer and obviously there's a ton of critique in art school and especially in school because you're still learning, um, people generally do not handle that critique super well all of the time. And there's actually like professors in classes where they teach you how to handle critique. And a big part of what they teach you is separating yourself from your work. Now I think that's a lot easier when you are an artist um, because when you get a bad critique or you do a bad piece of work um, you didn't hurt someone in the process whereas when you're a body piercer um, if you do a bad piercing or you make a bad call um, you can hurt someone in the process and that can linger that can stick with you and I think we as piercers because of that are 
so very attached to our work and so very hyper aware of the consequences of our work. And that really strong attachment can really sometimes allow us to shut down in the face of critique or feedback. And what I see happen all the time is a piercer who like really needs and could benefit from critique and feedback, right? There's something lacking in technique, in sterilization and jewelry quality and setup. Um, get critique or feedback that's actually like really phenomenal advice for them with their skill level and where they're at and completely shut down and run away from it. Feedback like, hey, these angles aren't great. Like, have you considered like going and shadowing someone or, or doing some more training or education about this piercing? And they will go literally like, oh my God, like you're bullying me. Like, I don't know why you're being so mean. Like, I don't think the piercing is that bad. They'll literally like deactivate social media accounts, like run and bury their head in the sand and refuse to hear any feedback about things that they did wrong. And, you know, like I get it because these conversations are very uncomfortable. I've been piercing, it's almost 11 years now. Um, and I have, spent time learning how to handle critique and I am not perfect. There are still piercings that I do that are not 100%, um, especially like guesting and traveling and working with lots of different piercers. The cool thing is that I get to get critique and feedback from lots of different piercers. And sure, yeah, a lot of it's great, but there's always areas for improvement and it's still uncomfortable sometimes to get that feedback. Um, and sometimes it's uncomfortable just because it's like, damn, like I thought I was doing better with that. But a lot of the times it's uncomfortable because it's like, shit, like I didn't do the absolute best job possible for this client. Um, and that's the stuff that keeps me awake at night, you know? Uh, a piece being a fraction of an angle off, uh, you know, not having like a super smooth jewelry transfer, um, something not laying 100% the way I wanted it to at anatomy. Um, not being able to pull off a piercing for a client that they really wanted, like with their anatomy or with the jewelry stock available to me. Um, this is all stuff that like literally keeps me up at night, you know? Even though I know that piercers are only humans, even though I know that we're always learning and that these things happen and that like making a mistake does not inherently make you a bad piercer. It's about how you handle it when you do. It's still the stuff that keeps you awake at night. And I think especially when it comes to critique, that's the stuff that makes it so hard for people to sometimes hear critique and hear feedback. But at the end of the day, especially as body piercers, we kind of have to get over that and be able to hear the critique and be able to hear the feedback. Because what matters most at the end of the day is not our ego, it's not how good we think we are or how good or bad we actually are or how much we love it or how passionate we are about it. It's about our clients. It's about our clients and them getting good results and good work at the end of the day. And part of them getting that is us being able to hear critique because we're not always going to be perfect. We're not always going to do 100% of the job 100% of the time. We're going to have off days. We're going to make mistakes. We're going to do incorrect piercings. But also the field is constantly changing and growing and there's always new stuff to learn. There's always new information about sterilization, sanitation, technique, jewelry materials, all this stuff. And the knowledge that was cutting edge and the safest, best information in the field, you know, to three, five years ago is not that same knowledge anymore. You know, I spent years giving out aftercare that now is incredibly incorrect. I spent years working with jewelry that now I understand is not safe, is not the best thing for my client. Even in recent years, I've changed the way I set up my trays because I've learned more about sanitation and sterilization. We understand new things. How we handle cross-contamination and decontamination in a studio, that completely changed during COVID. There was new research, new information accessible to us. What we were doing before that wasn't best practice anymore. So even if you are doing everything perfectly, you somehow magically never make a mistake, um, and if that's you, you know, let me know your secret because I would love to hear it. Um, even if we're doing like the absolute best job humanly possible, there's still, the industry is still changing. There's still new knowledge. There's still new science. There's still new medicine. Um, we're still going to be outpaced by that knowledge and find out the things that we've been doing forever are wrong. So if you're going to be a body piercer or you're going to work in an industry like this, you got to learn how to hear that you're wrong because it's going to happen 
many, many times in your career, from making a mistake to the entire science of how we handle like viral cross-contamination to a studio, growing and being more accurate and learning better things that we could do. Now, none of this excuses people using critique to bully. And I do think that's a problem, honestly, like probably in every field. It's probably not just isolated to piercing. Um, I think it's really easy sometimes to think that we're giving a critique and instead say something that comes off as bullying. And I've, I've been guilty of this in the past, which is why, you know, I feel like I'm uniquely equipped to speak on it. Um, I am very blunt and very honest, especially when I'm giving critique. And I say it all the time, you know, clients' bodies matter more than piercers' egos. But that doesn't mean that you need to be mean. And I've definitely struggled in the past with being unnecessarily harsh or honest um, when I've been giving critique. Because in my mind, I was defending the client. Um, but honestly, if I truly cared that much about the client, um, being super harsh with that feedback is not the way for that feedback to be well received. I don't think that people should be like coddled and have their hands held. You know, if someone does a really bad piercing that really could hurt or injure a client, you know, I don't think we should be like, oh, like you tried your best, like gold star. Um, I do think we need to say like, hey, this should not have been done. This could cause someone like really serious bodily harm. Like this is not okay. Here's what you need to work on. But what we don't need to do is tell people like they need to quit piercing, they need to hang up their needles, um, they're a bad person. And how you deliver critique really makes a difference, right? Because because telling someone, man, you fucked up, like hang up your needles, quit piercing, this isn't for you. That's bullying. But telling someone, hey, this should not have been done. This was done really incorrectly. This could really seriously hurt a client. And like, here's things that could really go wrong with this. I think you should maybe consider stepping back from offering this piercing until you can get more knowledge and information. And here are resources that you could use to get that knowledge and information. Those are two very different ways of delivering a very similar message. And one is delivered with a lot more kindness and a lot more compassion behind it than the other. And at the end of the day, if we really care about clients getting the best service possible and access to better, safer piercings all across the board, um, we need to give critique in a way that other piercers who really need to hear it want to listen to it. And if we give critique in such a way that it just shuts them down and they don't want to hear it at all anymore, that's not that beneficial. And I had to learn that lesson the hard way because I definitely in my past gave critique that was unnecessarily harsh and rude. And while it came from a good intention place, the impact was still one of greater harm. And that's something that I needed to learn and grow from and live with. And I'm hoping by talking about this openly online and being honest about it, I can help other people learn from that same mistake too. And honestly, I think that same piece of advice can apply to a lot of people who are outside of the industry. Like if you have friends or family members who get unsafe piercings or use low quality jewelry, it can sometimes be really frustrating. And sometimes you want to like sit them down and shake them or yell at them and, and be like, why would you do this? I'm so excited I dropped my highlighter. You want to sit down and you want to yell at them and you want to be like, like, why are you doing this? Like, this is such a bad idea. This is so unsafe. Like, you shouldn't do this. And... Again, like you wanna give people this information, this feedback in a way that makes them want to listen and making someone feel bad or awful or like just not good for doing it um, is not really the best way to get people to listen. As a tangent, I am like fighting for my life not to do eyeliner right now. I like, I really shouldn't because I have psoriasis like literally on my eyeball right now. And if I do makeup, it's just gonna irritate it longer and it's gonna flare up longer, so I shouldn't. But we're hosting a party today and I wanna look cute. This is a lesson for me in feeling comfortable with my natural skin and not needing to have makeup on. And I need you all to tell me to not put fucking makeup on my eye right now because I, I really shouldn't. I really need to let my psoriasis heal. But you know, when I was an apprentice and when I was getting into the industry, I was really fortunate to have that background in fine art and have gone to art school and gone to these classes and learned about critique and hearing critique and handling critique. 
it really prepared me for being a body piercer and dealing with the critique and feedback that you need to get to become a really good piercer. And I don't really think that's something that gets talked about enough in the industry. We're always happy to talk about technique and sterilization and sanitation, but a lot of apprentices don't get taught things like how to hear and handle critique, how to separate their work from themselves, how to make the most out of critique. Because Getting feedback, no matter who you are that's negative, can bring up a lot of really complicated emotions. And if you let those emotions run rampant, you won't get the most out of that feedback that you possibly could. So if you follow me and you're a piercer or you're in the industry or you're an apprentice or you're looking to get in the industry, I would really encourage you to take some time to like genuinely practice your critique skills. Like become comfortable with discomfort. Become comfortable hearing negative things about your work and be able to separate that from yourself. Learn to sit with those uncomfortable feelings and process them and then let them go and focus on learning and growing from the critique. And also be gentle to yourself. Remember that all piercers make mistakes. None of us are perfect. And even if we were, there's still changing science. There's still changing medicine. We're always going to be learning new and better ways to do things and as a result of that learning that ways that we were doing things weren't great or weren't as good as they could have been and that's part of working in this field. But also if you're going to give critique and feedback to other piercers or other apprentices, co-workers, people you know, remember that the end goal is to create more safe piercings for more clients. The end goal is always the client's bodies and their safety and their well-being and what's going to be most effective, not to tell this piercer that what they did was wrong or what they did was bad, but to get this piercer to do safer, better work for their clients. And that's usually going to be a response that's rooted in a place of compassion and care rather than a place of frustration or anger or disappointment. I'm really bummed that I didn't get to do like a super fun makeup look today, um, but I really, really wanted to sit down and film this because I feel really strongly about the topic of this video. Um, and again, it was a lesson that I had to learn the hard way, so I'm really hoping that by being honest about my own flaws and my own struggles, uh, I can help other people from having to learn the same hard lesson too. Anyway, I have to go get a bunch of stuff to make a charcuterie board and um, some other fun treats for today. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. It was so fun hanging out and chatting with y'all and I cannot wait to sit down and chat again soon. Uh, and hopefully by the next time we see each other, um, my poor eye is all healed up and my psoriasis is gone. <laughs> As per usual, if you like my content, please hit like and subscribe. Uh, all of your support means the world to me, and I hope you have an awesome rest of your day. Bye!